Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Raspberry Pi inside the Pandora's Box arcade system while still keeping the Pandora's Box arcade board with the 800 built-in games fully functional. Essentially, they will be two separate systems with their own power and video output but sharing the same controls. The Pandora's Box arcade systems are great in that they have hundreds of arcade games built in but they are missing a lot of games for home consoles. Using the Pandora's Box arcade as a USB controller for the Raspberry Pi, it allows access to more emulators and games. For this reason, I installed the Raspberry Pi 2 inside the Pandora's Box arcade enclosure to have the best of both worlds. Watch my other videos for reviews of the Pandora's Box arcade systems if you would like to know more about them. In this video, I'll show you how to drill two holes for the Raspberry Pi's uh, USB, HDMI, and power outputs. Configure the Pandora's Box controls as two separate game controllers in Recall Box. Convert the Player 2 pause button as the power switch for the Raspberry Pi and then wire everything up. For this mod, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2 with Recall Box, but before doing any modifications, test everything and make sure your Raspberry Pi works with the Pandora's Box plugged up. I'm not going to go into details on how to load Recall Box or where to find ROMs. There are tons of other tutorials that do a very good job at describing that. So here are the things you'll need, a Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 3, HDMI USB extension mount, another USB extension mount for power, OTG cable, a short USB-A male-to-male -male cable for connecting the Raspberry Pi to the Pandora's box controls, a longer USB-A male-to-male cable for power, a USB 5 volt power adapter, and a 30 millimeter hole saw. Links to these items will be in the description if you're interested in picking them up. I'm going to drill two 30 millimeter holes for the HDMI, USB, and power. The extension cables are designed for fitting into 29 to 30 millimeter holes. One of the extensions has an HDMI and USB socket, which is for video output to the monitor and connecting power for the Raspberry Pi. Another extension will have the headphone jack and a USB to connect the Pandora's box controls to the Raspberry Pi. Luckily, the metal is pretty thin, so it shouldn't be too hard to drill. Make sure you find a good place to drill your holes, test fit and mark where the extension mount should go to ensure it's not blocking anything or preventing you from closing the lid. Use a center punch to mark the start of the hole so your drill doesn't wander, then drill a small pilot hole. You can then use a hole saw. The hole doesn't have to be perfect or exactly 30 millimeters since there is a lip on the extensions that should cover up any imperfections. Remember to always wear safety goggles when using any power tools. When drilling, go at a slower speed and pulsate the drill and it'll cut through easily. It's probably a good idea to vacuum the shavings as you're drilling Then use a file or some sandpaper to get rid of any burrs so that you don't cut yourself. After cutting the two holes for the extension cables, it should look something like this. To mount the Raspberry Pi into the enclosure, I'm going to use some 3M Dual Lock. It's basically like Velcro in that it helps keep the Raspberry Pi in place and at the same time, it prevents the metal from the enclosure from shorting the contacts underneath the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're going to mount is this USB headphone um, extension cable and you basically plug it into one of the holes that you drilled and all you have to do is uh, screw in the nut to keep it in place. And this is the one that provides the, the connection from the Raspberry Pi to the Pandora's box controls as well as the headphone. The next extension cable we're going to install is the HDMI as well as the power for the Raspberry Pi and it's the same process. This one is a little bit tighter but you just basically have to wiggle it in and then screw in the nut on the back to keep it secure. These extension mounts are held in place with this plastic nut and just screw it in to tighten everything up to make sure that it doesn't turn as you plug things in. So this extension cable provides the headphone jack so we're gonna plug that into the Raspberry Pi here and it also provides the input for the Pandora's box controls. So this should go into one of the USB ports on the front of the Raspberry Pi. The second extension mount provides the HDMI out for video 
as well as power for the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see here, it's actually a USB-A, so we have to convert it down to a micro USB by using this OTG cable, and then we can plug it into the Raspberry Pi to power it. So we're gonna plug the HDMI now into the Raspberry Pi and make sure you have it orientated correctly. And the last thing we need to plug up is the micro USB cable to power the Raspberry Pi and it should go into the port near the back there. And the next thing you want to do is tidy up all these wires and make sure that you can close the lid without it getting in the way. So if you want to use the Raspberry Pi that is installed, what you need to do is hook up the Pandora's box controls from the bottom USB port into the Raspberry Pi's USB port and what you need is this really short uh, USB-A male-to-male connector, preferably one that is not too long and that can just reach from the Pandora's box to the Raspberry Pi. And this will allow you to use the arcade controls from the Pandora's box. To power the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna use another USB-A male-to-male, but a much longer one. And we're gonna plug it into this USB uh, 5 volt adapter and then plug it into the uh, USB port on this side. This is what is going to power the Raspberry Pi and all you need to do is plug this into your wall socket. All you have to do now is hook up the HDMI cable. The Pandora's box uh, HDMI output is only active when you provide it power and turning on the switch. So right now it's in Raspberry Pi mode and to play the Pandora's box games you need to hook up the HDMI and the power for it. Before we go to the next few steps we're going to test it out by plugging it up to a monitor and making sure that it powers up it's probably a good idea to label all the connections so you don't get confused in the future. Next we'll configure the player 2 pause button to be used as a power button for the Raspberry Pi. To do this we're going to wire the pause button to the GPIO pins 5 and 6 on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a couple of breadboard wires and extending them so they can reach the Raspberry Pi from the buttons. I also put on some quick disconnects at the ends to plug them up to the buttons. Plug one end of the wire to the GPIO pins 5 and 6 on the Raspberry Pi and then plug the quick disconnects on the button on the Pandora box controls. We also have to make a configuration change in recall box. So go to the web UI of recall box and then edit the configuration. And down here you'll see something that says system power switch equals pin five, six push. Since we're using a push button as the power switch, we're gonna have to uncomment this line by taking out the semicolon and then this line will be active. And then what you want to do is go to the very bottom and if you want you can back up this um, configuration file before you save it. So click save and the next time you reboot it should be active. You can find out the IP of your Raspberry Pi by going into the network settings and this is how you can connect to the web UI. So now when you press the player 2 pause it should initiate a shutdown of the Raspberry Pi. And when it's off, when you press that same button, it initiates a startup. When you plug the Pandora's box controls into the Raspberry Pi, it will show up as one gamepad. This is because the operating system doesn't know they are actually two separate gamepads coming from the single USB cable. To fix this, you have to modify the boot CMD line.txt and add a USB HID quirks entry to let the operating system know to treat the Pandora box controls as two separate controllers. So if you have the exact same Pandora's box arcade system as I do, you can just add this uh, entry into your CMD line.txt file at the very end. If not, I'll show you how to find the proper product IDs for your Pandora's box. And to do that, you will have to SSH into your Raspberry Pi by typing SSH root at your IP address and then typing in the password recall box root. Before plugging in the Pandora's box controller, type LSUSB. This will list all the USB devices that plug into the Raspberry Pi. Now plug in the Pandora's box controller and then do another LSUSB. This way you'll see a new entry at the very top. And this is the product key or the product ID for the Pandora's box controller. Now make note of that and write it down somewhere because we're going to use that to edit the CMD line.txt. Easiest way to edit this file is just to take the micro SD card out of the Raspberry Pi and then plug it into your computer and editing it directly. You want to add the 
the entry at the very end of the line like so. You may have to hook up a USB keyboard in order for you to configure the controls. And what you wanna do is hit the enter button on your keyboard to bring up the main menu. And then you can go down to controller settings and hit the A key. And now you can configure a controller and uh, hit A again. And as you can see, it's detected two gamepads now instead of just one. So adding the USB HDI quirks entry worked. Hold down a button to configure player one. Now what we're going to do is set up the controls, hit up, down, left, right. We're going to skip these. So hold down a button, skip, skip, skip. And we're going to hit the A button, B, X, Y, start, select, page up, page down, and we're gonna skip these buttons. So just hold down the button. And finally, you wanna set the hotkey. So we're gonna hit another button for the hotkey and then we go okay. And the controls are set up. And what you wanna do is make sure that input P1 is on zero and input P2 is on one. And you don't have to set up the second player because uh, Re Recall Box will copy the settings from player one to player two for you so that's all we have to do and what you want to do now is just hit the back button and we are done setting up the controls next i'll quickly test out a game for you so i'm going to run street fighter 2 turbo just to show you that two players do work you're probably better off playing street fighter from the pandora's box arcade board but anyways i just wanted to demo this for you so as you can see i can select a player and press some buttons with the second controller and this is actually working pretty well for two player games so you can have more than two players as well because you do have a raspberry pi now and if you have the one that has bluetooth installed like the raspberry pi 3 or a bluetooth dongle you can pair your Bluetooth controllers and play games that have more than two players. Anyways, I hope you found this guide useful. There are many ways you can accomplish what I just showed you, but I hope it gives you an idea on how to modify your own Pandora's Box arcade system with a Raspberry Pi and have them both installed and working. It's really nice to take this around and play with either the 800 built-in games from the Pandora's Box arcade board or play the console systems from the Raspberry Pi. I'll close out this video by playing a few games and you'll find the links to all the stuff I used in this how-to in the description. If you like this video, comment, share, like, or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.